with a new album, Father Shadow, is right around the corner. It comes out in two weeks, I think. Mm-hmm. Yep, two weeks. Yes. 17 uh, days, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Totally. Very exciting stuff. Absolutely. Um, can you tell us a little bit um, of the meaning behind the album title? Um, it's, you know, all our albums are a bit like semi conceptual. Uh, and I try to tie them together with something that's going on with the band at the same time uh, also some like key happenings in the story which is like the backdrop of a lot of the songs and the lyrics yeah and in illustrations and so on uh and for this one father shadow as well as the the last one called and the battle royale it was about you know losing that uh front figure or father figure in uh like in the story there's like a king and a prince shift going on um and for us from the front it was a bit similar to what was going on in the band where you know jonathan came in 2017 uh roland uh, took a step back um, and it just felt like you know now we're moving on without because me and Roland and Roger we've been doing albums since 2005 and it's um, Lost and Loading was our what seven eight album together <laughs> yeah. so so we always had our formula and how we did things and how all our structures and now with these two couple of albums it's it's about you know finding our own way uh, reinventing ourselves and getting the group together with uh, with the members we have now mm-hmm. uh, and you know there's there's still you know, Roland was a very appreciated uh, person in the band obviously from uh, from also the Sonic era uh, yeah of us. and I guess we we always been viewed as a pair both him and me like vocal vice uh, vocal Wise and also like Roger, my brother, and like the three of us together starting the Angaina. And so I think it represents that in a way, <laughs> with the <laughs> father shadow thing. Uh, and also w- with the story, like more dramaturgy, hands on, that's what's going on in the, in the, in the story. Like on the, by the end of the last album, the king dies and it's time for for the the prince to handle the burden in a way and it comes with a lot of problems i mean <laughs> so, so it's a bit of a uh double-sided meaning to it i think and, and it's also supposed to, uh, supposed to be viewed as a not like any particular shadow or, or it's more like a force of like or you know, like a spell or something. I cast father shadow on you, know? <laughs> <laughs> and I think some people can connect to that in a way. It's uh, it's a bit subjective, I know, but yeah. it felt like it was a strong um, title and meaning to it, with with a lot of angles going into it. <laughs> I agree. It's a uh, um, short and punchy. It really sticks with you. So. Um, yeah. Like say where it's subjective, that's that's kind of fun as well. And that, you know, uh, I think I like that as well. If people can make up their own decisions, at exactly. least at first glance. Yeah, whatever it means to when people read it and they imagine something, that's what it means, you know. Yeah. So, so I like to keep it a bit open, even if there's some deeper meaning to it when when it comes to the thematic of the band. And yeah. also, I think I was aiming for. You know, our debut album with Sonic Syndicate was called Eden Fire. Uh, and I think Father Shadow have a bit of the same clang to it. <laughs> uh, and it, it was, I guess, the same mentality in a way. With It was more of a force, like Eden Fire. It wasn't like Eden burning down. It was more of, of a force uh, in that name. And I think it's the same mentality with, with this title. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, musically, how does this one uh, differ from And the Battle Royal? Uh, 
I would say with that in mind, what I, I just said, like we changed up the members and yeah. the, the the majority of us been working together with our formula for and structures for a very long time. It was a bit of a terrifying experience to actually do this <laughs> with, <laughs> with a new pair of people. Uh, and, and it was a lot about discovering um, where we are like finding the the depths of each other uh, music creative wise and just setting up new structures in the band for how we're going to handle this in the future so i think it was a bit about trial and error you know like testing our doing some baby steps uh towards what the formula eventually would be and i mean on father shadow we have we had our formula already like we figured that out on the last album even if if i really like and the battle royale but mm. i think that's how we discovered how we're gonna work in the future and on father shadow we got to practice that full out like it was no compromises like this is the formula now and this is how we're gonna work uh, and also songwriting and from a songwriting perspective, was we have three very strong songwriters in the band with uh, the drummer Jonathan and my brother, uh, and they got uh, equal airtime on this album. Uh, and then I write all the lyrics and, and uh, do the vocal arrangements with Jonathan. Mm. Um, but. I think on on the previous work or or especially the three first ones, it was more the old formula which was formed in Sonic Syndicate, basically where Roger, my brother, usually comes up with the the song structure and and then everyone ships in. But now, like everyone been writing songs and everyone is getting equal airtime on this album, which makes for a, a bit of like bigger. Uh, dynamic and takes the takes the turns a bit wider than previously i would say cool. it's, it's pretty it's pretty smart how the album opens because the first song is like the core of it is jonathan's and the second song never yield is richard's song and the third one is roger's song so you kind of get the entire spectrum there initially with the three songs <laughs> <laughs> so. oh, that's cool um, this year is also the 10th anniversary of The Unguided. Was it important to have a new album out to mark that um, landmark? Uh, not particularly. I think we, we just figured that out recently. That like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a decade, have gone. <laughs> We're like, what, five, five albums deep with the. But I think when we. It's it's not like any commercial a angle for us in the band. It's basically us writing songs when we feel we have something to say in the band. It's uh, um, and uh, and this is just how they've been placed over the years. Mm. And I think like after when, when Roland left and Jonathan came in uh, around sixteen, seventeen, um, then we felt like we need an album out pretty fast after Lost and Loading just to showcase new version or new era of the band. And yeah. for this one, I think we, we just took a bit longer time to to structure it up and to to absorb some new inspiration and uh, to be there creativity wise. Uh, cool. So it's, it wasn't it wasn't intentional to release it on a, the to, 10th year anniversary but it it's a good uh, very good point <laughs> yeah it's a happy so. coincidence so. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> um one thing i really like about the album is the artwork and the young guy did always had really good artwork thank you um, <laughs> i know you're um quite involved with the art in terms of direction and things like that mm. um did you um do the artwork for this one yourself, or is this another Quang Hong um, creation? No, like all, all the all the artists, Quang Hong doing the the stuff, but it's it's always from a concept or or uh, a description from 
from something we we throw back and forth uh, at each other. And I think this uh, album artwork have been done for years because we try to plan ahead all the time. Like when when we started the Unguided in 2010, we had artworks and plans for three albums <laughs> already wow. at that point. Uh, and it's the same, like I have the artwork for the coming two albums already done, basically. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. so, so it's we try to plan ahead as much as possible because it's it's a pretty vast. If you look under the hood of the band, it's a pretty vast conceptual story, and everything ties together. And the same with the artworks and stuff. So I, I like to to plan ahead as much as possible. Uh, so we've been sitting on this for quite a while. Uh, um, and it's it's cool to have it. I actually have the vinyl here in front of me, and it's it really comes to its full potential in that format uh, with all the single artworks he did for the album and and concept stuff. So it's it's always a treat to work with Kwang Hong. He's such a talented uh, Chinese artist, uh, uh, and I think he he outdid himself a bit on this one. Yeah, no, it's it's really vivid. It's it's fantastic. Uh, we tried to keep those like for the first three albums we had those RGB scale going red, green, blue uh, and then when we uh, continue with the band because we didn't know what to do after that originally so, but then we just continue with the uh, uh, Smeek <laughs> Cyan, Magenta and Yellow so the next album will be the yellow one, and this one is the, supposed to be a magenta, but it's a bit purple, I guess. <laughs> so it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then eventually we have something new coming, uh, which then, but we like to plan ahead and have, have that figured out before we, we even start to, to write songs for the album. Wow. <laughs> um, already done two uh, videos for the album as well. Um, Crown Prince Syndrome and Night Taker. Um, mm. or, yeah, Night Taker. Or a Saffron um, Special. Sorry? It's, uh, it's uh, Crown Prince Syndrome and Saff for this album. Night oh, Taker was the last one. Yeah. Why the hell have I got Night Taker written down here? <laughs> it's a quite new Because thing. I'm a fucking idiot that doesn't do his research properly. <laughs> um, released a uh, um, video for Saff last spring. Oh, okay. For the EP release. Yeah. yeah. But um, how well do you think the videos sum up the ideas behind the album? Um, I mean, Crown Prince Syndrome, it, it's a conceptual song, but it's it's just a performance uh, video in that sense. And I think it was more about like presenting the new form of the band as we're moving on as a four piece for this album. Uh, we're, Henrik is is stepping down, um, the bass player. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think that it wasn't important to to tie it in with um, with the story that much more about actually trying to to present the new form of the band in a, in a good way, mm. uh, like how how you would experience it in a live format uh, and getting the fans familiar to to that. Mm. Uh, I mean, we we've done our fair share of very conceptual, like Inception, for example, which it ties right into the story. <laughs> it's a pretty <laughs> expensive CGI uh, construct between that as well. So, so we like to do it every now and then, but it's uh, but it's also cost a lot of money, of course. So we, we yeah. try to, for, for this one, we, we felt it was more important to do a more of a representing the, the flesh and the body of the band in a performance. Concept. Yeah, so that's what we did. Yeah. It's funny because I think um, in years gone by, people kind of dismissed performance videos a little bit um, because Which people like. Them? Sorry. Oh yeah, they dismissed performance videos. Oh, okay. I yeah, could... just in general. Yeah. yeah. Um, because people like to look at catchy visuals and things like that, but uh, given the current state of the world, it's it's almost more enticing to have a performance video because people are missing live shows that much. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I really, I, I'm like buying live uh, shows to, 
because some bands do the streams every now and then i try to watch it as much as possible like and also like the whacking open air stream was fucking killer i i love that kind yeah of stuff but it's the same thing as you said like uh, it come across pretty boring with the performance music video because people will want extra all in in their videos but mm -hmm. for now it's really effective i would say when there's no live scene whatsoever basically yeah uh, I mean, it almost feels just as um, fantastical as, or, or like a, like a little movie or something like that. So, yeah. Oh, I remember uh, light geeks. Uh, exactly. <laughs> 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 Nostalgic feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Watching a performance video. <laughs> um, well, you mentioned the change in lineup there. I meant to ask you what the, what's happening at the moment with the basis situation because I can't find. Um, any basis listed on any of your like profiles no. or anything like that so no it's it's been quite a process i think we it's been like in the when we released uh, Seth last year uh, spring mm -hmm. there's actually a scene towards the end of that video where henrik is moving out of the shot while the the four of us stay so it was already decided back then uh, but it was not until the album was presented and the crown prince syndrome uh, mm -hmm video released it was a bit more confirmed and i think like the reason that we have such good personal chemistry in the band now so for this album process we didn't want to bring in another guy so henrik have done all the bass on on the on the album we're still great friends with him and it doesn't have anything to do with you know there's no friction or anything it's just that time yeah. isn't uh, at his hand to to do what is you know asked of uh, as much as the rest of us and it felt because he did, couldn't commit to the the past years of touring either and it felt a bit weird to to have the four of us which replacing a uh, replacement bassist being out on the roads building his market value a bit as well uh, yeah. when he couldn't commit you know so we just thought it was more fair if we we did it this way and for the fan base we we figured like there, this when people or when a member leave there's a hit and when someone new comes in there's another hit so we just try to minimize that for this album and and there's no rush for or our side will uh, and if something really interesting comes up we'll look into it but at this time we're very confident the four of us to move on uh, as a four piece and take in some uh, hired gun for the for the base uh, slot, basically. And okay. uh, but we'll see how how that change over this album process. Now it's not much live shows going on, so it doesn't really matter. No. <laughs> so, so I guess it will be a decision making next year when live shows start to happen again a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, we've um, skirted around the issue of what's been going on in the world. How difficult yeah. has it been to promote this new album, given that you can't go out and tour, or at least do a lengthy tour? And like that? Um, no, I think Naples have had their creative ideas around it. Uh, and I guess it's all a bit limited to our life situation. Like everyone in the band is working, you have pretty important positions on their jobs and families and all that so it, it it of course if you want to tie in a release with uh tour to support it yeah uh, but uh, i i remember like when we released and battle royale i don't think we we made a tour on, it was released end of 2017 and we didn't do the tour until like the end of 2018 so but that's just how how it is for us to yeah. to make it happen and make it work with our private lives as yeah. this is more of a professional hobby for us all um and i think it's the same now time we're not too stressed about it since it's not our main income in any way or it's not for the commercial side it's more of the art side of it yeah uh, but but still i think napalm had pretty creative ways to promote it and and i like the new campaign they did for this and also it feels great seeing the current state of the world to 
be able to give something back in these t- these times because <laughs> you know there were talks about pushing it uh, a bit but i think we also all agreed to that if there's something if someone is going to be happy about our music in these times we're going to release it <laughs> at this point yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and, yeah. it's and of course could... it's different but it's uh, it's it's nice in a, another way as well i think mm. Richard, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me today. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Oliver. Thanks all in the get. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> on. I'll all speak right. to you again soon, mate. Good luck with the album. Thank you very much.